So I'm looking at the great plumbing fun that is under here. And if you can see underneath, this is the hot water line. It comes over to this old valve, the one that I'm sure is going to leak when we turn it off. Um, I thought while we're here, what they had done, they ran the hard line there and then ran the flexible line. So we want to replace the flexible line. We've got a new one coming, uh, but we're going to be back there messing around. Uh, we're going to have to put a board in to fill that in. So I thought, well, might as well put a valve here. We don't know for sure what time the dishwasher is getting here. And we can't turn the water back on until we've got a working shutoff valve here. So the choice would either be what they've done here on the cold is they've soldered on a uh, coupler to go to PEX and then they've done a crimp on and then when they painted the cabinets they obviously got overspray but that's PEX underneath. So the better way to do this would be to cut this off here because it's so rough and corroded and there's a lot of solder, a shark bite fitting probably wouldn't work, so I probably have to solder it. I don't want to mess with soldering it. What I do have is a clear spot back here. I've put a mark. There's enough area here that's not corroded. I can clean it up and get a shark bite to seal. So the challenge with the shark bite connectors is they're great. Uh, they work real well with PEX, but PEX is so easy to crimp that. Uh, you know, not a whole lot of a reason to use them there. They would be used more for probably joining copper to PEX. Uh, but the challenge with just plain copper, so oftentimes it's old and corroded, or if you get back near an old fitting, there'll be significant uh, slag from the solder joint, and it's not going to seal around that. It really needs a smooth radius around the outer diameter. So I'll kind of point out how those fittings fit together and how they work here. So you can get these as a straight coupler, uh, or this one uh, really is either a compression fitting here on this end, or just a thread on to your braided hose that you would hook up to a dishwasher. Uh, you can also get in toilets or sinks. I actually put one uh, crimp on valve very similar to this when I added the uh, uh, outdoor water faucet and spliced it in under the sink supply line. So whether it's PEX or copper, uh, they make these for various pipe sizes, half inch being the most common and what we're dealing with here. Um, there are two O-rings outside, um, a lot like a high pressure fuel line fitting if you've ever put a uh, fuel filter on a car. It works very similar. So whether it's PEX or copper, those two O-rings are going to seal at two separate points back here. So the outer radius here has to be smooth. Uh, pit free, bump free, you know, it can deal with a little bit, but certainly if you've got big chunks of solder sticking out there or serious corrosion, it's not going to seal around. Now, being a double seal uh, helps compensate for that some, but that's really why I wanted to focus on getting a point that was clear, not up here next to where an old joint had been, uh, but out here somewhere on that piece down there. This challenge really becomes how to cut that out of there. So, I really thought I had a situate this camera so you can see a uh, pipe cutter you can rotate around but I don't have a lot of clearance here uh, obviously the full size cutter is not going to work so what I've managed to do is put my uh, mini uh, hacksaw through here and I've made my mark right there and I'm just going to cut right there Sure, it's a little bit of work doing it by hand, but it's not bad. The copper's pretty soft. Okay, so there we go. Bob's my uncle. We're cut. And now we can get this back off here, and I probably ought to clean that water up that has dripped out of the line there. Most ideal probably would have been, again, to desolder this here. It, uh, you know, go to PEX from there with a the solder on and then a crimp to the PEX. But I really don't want to mess with soldering and, and one of the other concerns then is I've got all this PEX around. If I get any stray heat, there's also, I don't know if you can see here, it looks like another CPVC compression fitting. That's the line out to the uh, uh, ice maker in the refrigerator. So, a whole lot of areas I've got to be careful there. And we'll get that out of here in just a minute. So I really need to clean this edge up, and I've got some emery cloth. About 150 grit sandpaper, essentially in a strip. Uh, 
usually half or three quarter inch wide, to clean up a mating surface there. There's really no magic uh, to this process. The uh, big thing is we're not looking to take a whole lot off. We're not looking to grind this down just to take any burrs off. Now they do sell an internal deburring tool for the inner diameter, but uh, I don't think we have anything there, but I am worried about anything around the outer edge uh, that might catch those O-rings and the very end out here. So I'm gonna hit that lightly and then we're going to essentially come like you would in the automotive bearing surface or shaft surface. We're just gonna try to polish that up. Any burrs, any surface corrosion. Uh, it's a bit tricky getting in here, but it's not. It's not awful. We already see how much brighter it's looking there, um, so that's a good sign for a good seating surface. this and then and then this will be the part of the diameter that's probably the toughest to get here Still live power cord for the uh, disposer. Now that radius on the end of the pipe, I'm going to pay special attention to. You're going to have a pretty good amount of grit there, so I've got a cloth. We're going to wipe it off. We're going to kind of look. Um, we're looking pretty clean there. I don't know if that really shows up real well, but that's pretty clean looking pipe. Um, if we were soldering, that would definitely be more than clean enough. But since we've got a rubber O-ring, I'm going to hit that just a little bit more. And this is some cheap emery cloth from Amazon. And it's not holding up to the water very well. Good emery cloth. Some nice cloth backing and waterproof adhesive for the grit. stands up well but this stuff doesn't really seem to be doing so hot. The water's off but I did get a couple of five gallon buckets of water in the bathtub so that we would have some water till I get it back on. So I've got a cup of that out here and I'm cleaning my rag. I'm making sure we're nice and shiny and clean. Good sealing surface for those o-rings. Um, you know I've heard people complain about the shark bite fittings but you know, the knowledgeable people that I've talked to that have used them and the couple of times that I've used them, it's been a few years now. And none of those instances have leaked. So it really makes me think people aren't cleaning up or they're trying to uh, make it seal up. You know, maybe around uh, some old socks. Definitely knowing how that sealing surface works. So. Thing I don't like about these, they do have a flow restrictor. If you're using PEX, the PEX is soft enough it can't handle the constant tension and over time it will give. So that's meant as a reinforcement. And the older ones, the first style that I'd ever used, this was removable. You actually had to put it in. I don't know if people kept forgetting to put them in or what, uh, but now they've got them fixed inside and you really can't get them out. So what we have then is just a simple quarter turn ball valve. So the on position, off, on, Okay, so off usually is 90 degrees. Really, the main thing I guess I need to look for is how can I reach this? And I can probably just set it right there. Slide that guy right on. Now, when I get the hose hooked up to feed the, the new dishwasher, I can just simply... He's on. But for now, he's off. I can go turn the water on. We can finish cleaning this up under here 
and have water to clean up with. So that'll be a lot handier than waiting for the new dishwasher and trying to get it in before we turn the water back on.